All right, guys, want to make a quick video on confluences. So which are the best confluences to use in your trading, how to know when to enter using these different confluences and a real live example of me using this and entering a trade. So if you don't know what confluence is in trading, it's multiple different criteria lining up and pointing towards one similar direction. So you can use different confluences in trading to enter trades more confidently and have a higher win rate at the end of the day. There are a few main confluences that I like to use. I like to simplify my trading. I don't trade smart money concepts. I don't trade Elliott Wave. I focus on mainly support and resistance using confluence with key Fibonacci retracement levels and also some ascending and descending parallel channels. Now I use a few different indicators to help me out. I use Easyago SR for the support and resistance levels. This is a new update with multi time frame support and resistance levels. It's not out yet, but if you guys want first access, be sure to click the first link in the description below. This pretty much takes away all of my manual technical analysis and gives me algorithmic levels that I can use as support and resistance. That is the number one most important is support and resistance. So always be taking longs at a support level and shorts at a resistance level. This indicator also comes with buy and sell signals, which can be great confirmations and can also be a great basis for entry. These signals are to be used on the Heiken Ashi candles. And you can see that when you're using these with the trend, we're obviously in a downtrend at the moment, taking each one of these sell signals would result in some huge gains. Now, let me explain why I'm looking for a long position right here. First things first, we're at a key support level on the one hour. I can see that we've rejected from this level before once, twice, three, almost four times in the past, and now we're retesting this level. I also see we have a golden pocket from this swing low to this swing high. The golden pocket is the 0.618 and the 0.65 Fib levels. Price tends to respect these levels and you'll usually see some sort of reaction at a golden pocket. So when you have a golden pocket overlapping an easy algo support or resistance level, that is a great spot to take a potential long or short position. Now, another piece of confluence I see is this descending parallel channel, right? I see we've tagged this channel once, twice and it's testing it currently maybe we'll see some sort of deviation um, and reclaim that support level for a long position and the final piece of confluence that i see is the easy oscillator so the easy oscillator is our own momentum indicator you can see that it's currently in this oversold zone so most of the time when price is in an oversold zone and it's at a key fib level and it's at a key support or resistance level there's a very high likelihood that price will go up from there now you can see that my long thesis would have been stopped out at this point right but when you're entering using these confluences you don't always want to enter via a limit order so it's best to wait for a little bit more confirmation um, before you enter a long position. So what exactly would I be looking for here? Well, the first thing I'd be looking for are these reversal signals on easy algo. And I like to go to the Heiken Ashi candles and you can see we've had quite a few of these reversal signals. The easy oscillator has not flipped to blue yet. So that would be my second piece of confluence. I wanna see this oscillator flip to blue on a lower time frame, maybe even like the 15 minute time frame. And I wanna see some candlestick patterns, right? I wanna see these candlesticks get thinner and thinner on Heiken Ashi and eventually reclaim this golden pocket right now we've kind of had a straight dump all the way through that golden pocket we haven't really seen bulls push the price up too much even if i go to the regular uh, japanese candles you can see that the bulls are looking pretty weak here so i'd want to see some more bullish candles uh, before entering a long position but it is in my long zone now i'm just waiting for the final pieces of confirmation to enter the trade now let's say you're working full time maybe you don't have time to go to a lower time frame for entry and you want to catch these on limit orders that's something you can do and that's totally fine just under understand that the likelihood of you getting stopped out is higher when you're using three plus pieces of confluence the odds are going to be in your favor, right? In this example, we have the support and resistance as our first confluence. We have the golden pocket as our second confluence. We have the descending parallel channel as our third confluence. And we have the easy oscillator in the oversold territory as our fourth piece of confluence. That's just on the one hour time frame. Now, if we go down to a lower time frame for entry, we can use the reversal signals on easy algo, the buy and sell signals on easy algo, the oscillator flip on a lower time frame. So that's three other different pieces of confluence in addition to the four on a high time frame so in total you know that's seven sometimes even eight pieces of confluence to enter a trade but like i said if you want to stick on a higher time frame that's totally fine you can set a limit order in this case i would set it at the 0.65 fib because that also has confluence with the parallel descending channel and you can and you can leave your stop loss right below so in this instance right 
you would have been stopped out on a long position. What's the reason for getting stopped out here? You may be asking, right? Because it looks like everything seemed to line up. Um, and there's two different reasons off the top of my head as to why this trade in particular would have failed via a limit order. The first reason being that Bitcoin is looking pretty shaky. It is Friday afternoon heading into the weekend. And it's just very, very unpredictable. It's not really in a certain trend. It's just ranging. And the second reason being that it won't work out all of the time, right? As a trader, you have to be willing to take that risk for that potential gain. So in this example, right, myself, I would have probably put around 150 to $200 as my risk. But the risk to reward in this situation is over a 10 risk to reward. So I can risk $200. But in return, I could make you know, upwards of $2,000, right? That's probably not realistic, I'll probably be taking profits on the way up, um, at least 50% on the way up. But still, right, I'm risking $200 to walk away with over, you know, a grand probably around 1500. After the trade is complete, if your risk to reward is let's say, risk Risking $100 to make $200, you can have a 50% win rate. So not even have an above 50% win rate, but still be extremely profitable. And I'm actually curious to see what price will do here because it looks like bulls are starting to push back. But still, it's not enough for me to enter a long position yet. I'll probably go down to the five minute time frame and look for a buy signal. And once I see that buy signal, I'll enter a long position. We did get that blue buy dot here on the easy oscillator. And it looks like we're reclaiming this five minute support level with these reversal signals. Volume seems to be creeping upwards a little bit. Another piece of confluence right there. So if we get a buy signal, I will take this. And that leads me into something else I want to talk about. And oftentimes people are confused as to when they should take the buy and sell signals. These buy and sell signals are supposed to be used as confluence, just like anything else in our algorithm. So you want to use these signals at key support or resistance levels or an obvious uptrend or downtrend. A great way to find out what trend it is, is to actually turn on your EMAs. Use the 80 EMA and the 200 EMA. If the 80 EMA is below the 200 EMA, you should only be looking for sell signals or shorts. And if the 80 EMA is above the 200 EMA, you are in a confirmed uptrend. So maybe look for long positions. But if price is at a key support or resistance level on a higher time frame with other confluence, like in this case, parallel channel and key fib level, then you can look for what I call reversion trades, meaning the trend is obviously bearish, but you're looking to counter trade the trend. So we'll see if price reclaims this parallel channel and golden pocket and look for a long position. But but I hope that made sense. And you guys understand what confluences are a little bit better. If you guys want the trading indicators that I use to help me with my confluence, be sure to click the first link in the description below. Like I said, we have some massive updates coming soon. One of them being the multi time frame support and resistance. But we also have some other things that I didn't show in this video. So so be on the lookout for those updates, guys. That's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel for more training content and I'll see you guys next video.